I'm giving myself 60 minutes to teach you everything that uh, myself and the team of teachers at Teach Ahead have learned from teaching on italki. I have been teaching on italki for over four years. I've seen a lot of changes over that time. Um, and this is not just for new teachers to learn how to start teaching on italki. This is also for current teachers to become better teachers on italki, to uh, be more competitive with your prices uh, by improving the quality of your classes. Um, so all in all, this course right here is a catch-all. It's everything you need to know to get started. Um, we also call it teaching on italki in the 2020s. Uh, because we will be updating this course um, intermittently as time goes on to make sure that we stay current, up to date with the trends as we do with all of our courses at Teach Ahead. Uh, so, you know, we're revamping, relaunching this course in 2024. We will be updating it 2025, 2026, and uh, etc. So let's dive in. All right, everyone, welcome to lesson number one. Uh, lesson number one, introduction to italki. So let's talk about what italki is. So what is italki? Italki is a global language learning community. It connects students and teachers for one-on-one -on -one online language lessons. It's very important to emphasize language because this is what differentiates or distinguishes italki from some other of its competitors, such as Preply, where you could learn not only languages, but other subjects as well from, teach from tutors. Um, italki emphasizes human interaction and cultural sharing for fluency. Uh, there are over 5 million students, 10,000 teachers. I'm one of them. Uh, we have other teachers at Teach Ahead who, who are part of that team. It offers instruction in more than 130 languages, um, many of those languages being endangered languages, but also the more commonly spoken languages in the world. Uh, it's based out of Hong Kong, but it is a truly global language learning community. And we would like to emphasize that italki tries to brand itself as a community. So it's not just where you are. Um, the idea is that it's not just uh, for um, buying and selling courses or uh, selling classes, um, but there's, there's also interaction um, through other features such as their blogs and their forums where people could kind of you know, network and talk and ask questions and have questions answered for them. So it's more than just a language learning platform. It's also a community itself. Um, how italki has grown. It was founded in 2006 as a social media platform for language exchange. So uh, even when I started on italki in 2019, a lot of people were going to italki not to buy courses or to sell courses, but actually to meet up, meet other people and to organize language exchange, uh, like e-tandem partnerships. Um, it then transitioned into an online teaching platform. So that's when it started to uh, kind of integrate what we know it for now, where you're buying courses, whether that be group classes or one-on-one -on -one classes. It expanded globally and acquired other language learning uh, platforms such as Lingby um, and absorbed these smaller companies. It offers various language lessons for different uh, proficiency levels, uh, provides uh, opportunities for casual conversation practice or for career advancement for qualified teachers. TEFL teachers can work as community tutors or professional teachers. We'll be talking about that difference in this course. A lot of you, that is one of the biggest questions you have. What is a community tutor? What is a professional teacher? What's the difference? And if you know what the difference is, how could I become a professional teacher? Professional teachers have higher requirements, um, including a degree, TEFL certificate, and teaching experience. Community tutors uh, focus on conversational practice and confidence building for English learners or Spanish learners, whichever uh, language they're teaching. But we'll talk about how, even though this is kind of like set in black and white, there are shades of gray between what teachers do and what uh, tutors do. All right, uh, welcome. Here we are in lesson number two, becoming an italki teacher or tutor. How do you do it? Let's find out. Teaching on italki, each applicant must choose one profile type. You cannot apply to be a teacher and a tutor simultaneously. Um, so whichever languages you teach, um, 
or tutor in, uh, they, they both have to be at the tutor level or the teacher level. So what's the difference? A professional teacher that requires training as an educator or extensive teaching experience. Um, you would offer structured le lesson plans. Typically, you don't have to. There are plenty of pro professional teachers who just offer like conversational practice. Applicants must upload documents demonstrating their training and experience. To be a community tutor, this would focus more on conversation practice. It emphasizes being friendly, helpful, and knowledgeable. Um, again, you should be these things as a professional teacher, arguably as well. Um, so the difference is uh, there's a bit of a shade of gray. A professional teacher has just as much of an earning potential as a community tutor. $80 USD is the maximum. If you're a professional teacher, you would get $10 minimum uh, for a class, but that is not guaranteed. You are not guaranteed any income on italki. You need to find the students. You need to market yourself. Italki is a language exchange platform. It's a language learning platform. It is a marketplace where teachers could meet students. As a community tutor, uh, you would start at the very lowest at $5 USD per hour. Six different types of classes. This could be like IELTS preparation for the IELTS exam or the DELE exam or the DELF exam if, you, if you're teaching French. This could be business English or business Chinese or business Portuguese. General English, general Ar Arabic. So you could have six different types of lessons as a professional teacher. As a community tutor, you could only have three different types of lessons and there are certain restrictions of which kinds of lessons you could have. So you basically set a menu on your profile with the different kinds of lessons that students could book depending on what their interests and needs are. For a professional teacher, you have more different types of um, courses or categories of lessons than what you would have as a community tutor. As a community tutor, you're restricted to only general courses and conversational practice courses. You're allowed to have three different types of lessons though. So you could have three different types of conversational lessons. Like maybe one will be like, uh, t talk about tourism with Ryan. The second one would be like talk about culture with Ryan. And this could feed into how you try to market yourself as a, a tutor on italki. So as a professional teacher, you need work experience, um, ideally uh, two years, um, education and certificate. Applying to italki, you're gonna start with creating an account You'll provide necessary information such as your name, languages spoken, languages to teach. Um, follow photo guidelines uh, to upload the profile picture. You'll need to choose your language level and upload supporting documents such as teaching certificates. Um, while you're applying, you will also need to um, populate your profile. All right, so you'll need to write an introduction highlighting language skills, background, and teaching methods. You need to appear in the video and speak in the languages that you have listed as native or C2. So if you're going to be advertising yourself as being able to teach at a certain level, you need to be at either native level or C2. What does native mean? Well, that is italki's own way of defining what a native speaker is. Um, you can't show, share any personal contact information. You can't promote other services. This is one of the easiest ways to get kicked off the platform. Uh, you can't use copyrighted material, uh, shoot your video horizontally with camera at eye level or on a stable surface. So applying to italki if you want to be a professional teacher um there are two different types of qualifications you could include and typically you would have both of these but you could have just one of them so type one is a university qualification this type of teacher is over the age of 18 has a bachelor's degree italki prioritizes applicants who majored in a language linguistics education culture or other specialized studies if you haven't done that, that's okay. Um, you could also have uh, the teaching qualification. So to receive this status, you must have some sort of teaching qualification. This could be a state teaching license, a CELTA, a DELTA, a TESOL, a TEFL, a TESOL. You need to have a stable internet connection. And honestly, even if you get accepted to italki, that's not 
your gateway into success. That's just the start. Um, if you want to book and receive bookings from students, if you want to actually fill up your calendar and your schedule, you're going to need to have high quality classes and having stable internet connection is a must. Um, having a camera and having a, a microphone that's working, those are essential as well in order for your students to feel comfortable while taking classes with you. You could use really any video communication tool. These are a few that italki suggests, like italki Classroom, Skype, Zoom, Google Hangouts, FaceTime, WeChat, QQ. Uh, we have um, courses that kind of walk you through and introduce you to using a few of these um, communication tools, uh, if you're interested in that. Um, when a student requests a lesson, uh, italki provides both you and the student with the necessary contact details, such as the Zoom account or IT. So you're going to set up your Zoom or your Skype or your uh, whatever video communication tool you use. Um, it's going to automatically be given to the student when they book a lesson with you. Um, this could also be a link to an italki classroom um, chat or a uh, Zoom. Um, a microphone and webcam are required. Headphones are also recommended for better audio. All right, welcome everybody to lesson number three, getting started on italki. So some of you have already been accepted to teach on italki. Others are anxiously waiting for the language that you want to teach to be open for new applicants, right? No matter what your situation is, even if you're just waiting to get started, um, this will provide you with some insights on what you can expect when you do get your foot in the door. Uh, this could also help some teachers or tutors who have experience on italki to just kind of up their game a bit. So let's dive in. Uh, you will start with an About Me page. This is uh, starts with an introduction. Uh, you will have a Me as a Teacher section. You will have a My Lessons and Teaching Styles uh, section and your resume. So that's your work experience, your teaching experience, etc. All right, setting up your lesson. So there will be a part of your profile where you will set up different types of lessons. Remember we were talking about this earlier. With professional teachers, you could have six different lesson types, all right? With community tutors, you could have only three. This is one of the reasons why people want to become professional teachers if possible, because this could make you a little bit more marketable. It could help attract more students who are looking for the, these specific tags or categories of classes. You will then uh, put your learning plan template. So this is a newer feature from italki as of 2024. Um, this is a template that will automatically be sent to your student or offered to your student. You will actually create the template um, based on your knowledge of language learning and language acquisition, if, if, if you have knowledge there. Um, and it basically has set goals, suggested learning frequency, etc. Um, this is optional. You don't have to set this up, but this could be something, it's like a little digital um, kind of aid that you could work with when you have a new student it could help you come off as more professional it could help you come off as more prepared and it could help to facilitate not just bookings but more importantly rebookings because long-term students are really where you're going to get uh, they're going to be your bread and butter right uh, number three, your first lesson preparation. You're going to have to get uh, get ready for your first lesson. You'll be creating an agenda, completing the to-do list um, on italki. Again, this to-do list is just um, a recommendation. You don't have to do it. Okay, so you'll be setting up a contact form for students to fill out. You're basically going to indicate what information you want from the student. All right. And that depends on what kind of teacher you are, right? And what your teaching style is, what your teacher beliefs are. Basically, after a student 
books with you or even if they're just interested in booking with you they could fill out this contact form that you create um, and it doesn't take very long then students could fill this out it automatically gets sent to you start off with your trial language lesson italki takes zero percent commission which is great for your trial language lesson all of it goes to you uh, the minimum price is five dollars so you could set it as low as five bucks if you want to yeah so free trial lessons aren't allowed trial lessons are optional you don't have to offer trial lessons so why would somebody want to offer a trial lesson well you could discount them all the way down to five bucks and you get all of the commission which is kind of nice um they could be 30 45 or 60 minutes but the nice thing about trial lessons as i said they're discounted so it could be a little carrot on the stick for students to just get their foot in the door have that first lesson with you. So we have trial lessons, we have general language lessons. Italki would take a 15% commission from this and they would take 15% commission from all of the other types of lessons aside from trial lessons. This typically focuses on developing the four skills, reading, writing, listening, speaking. Again, it doesn't have to. You could have a, a general English lesson type that students could book which is called improve your speaking with Ryan or improve your listening with Ryan or improve your reading with writing. So you could have different types of lessons that students book, but a lot of teachers, just to make it a little bit more kind of efficient, they would just rather have like improve your general competence in a language. What's the difference between conversational and general? Well, first of all, when you're having a conversation, typically you're focusing on speaking and listening. In these lessons, they're also way less structured typically, all right? It really depends on the teacher. Um, some teachers, like for example, my conversational lessons, I do incorporate a couple activities. I do give my students homework. We do check the homework. I do give them some feedback on their homework. So my conversational lessons may be even more structured than some teachers general. There are also specialized language lessons, uh, again, 15% commission. So test preparation, business English, right? Um, for you to really stand out in these areas, you would probably want to have a little bit of experience teaching IELTS preparation or teaching business English. Uh, setting up your availability. So on your profile, you will have your availability settings. You could limit this to current students. You could uh, make it that no students could book lessons with you. You could enable or disable instant lessons, which is a feature on italki where students could book a lesson with you kind of on the spot. Drop in, you do get paid, there is a commission, everything is the same as the other lessons. So you could disable that. You could enable or disable auto accept. So when a student requests to book a lesson with you, their request could be automatically accepted if you set your um, availability to that. Otherwise, you could set it that students could request to book a lesson with you and you could then decide whether you want to take, like accept that lesson or not. If you have auto accept disabled, then when somebody requests to like take a lesson with you, you could actually like check out their profile. Maybe you could even send them a message. You could also set your lesson request window, right? So that pertains to how close to a lesson starting a student could request a lesson. It indicates how much notice you get as a teacher uh, before a class starts. Um, number two, your teacher calendar. Uh, so you could create a one-off or a recurring availability. So remember, on italki, you set your calendar, you find your students, you provide your material, it's all you. You could set vacation blocks as well. Um, if you're not gonna be able to teach because uh, you're going on a trip to Spain, you, um, you could also integrate uh, your calendar with third-party calendars. So you could link your italki calendar to your Google calendar or to Outlook. Um, understanding other profile features. So there are many features on the platform. Um, upload your video regularly. As time goes on, 
you are updating your picture, you're keeping it current, right? Because you are evolving as a teacher. Uh, your tagline, so there's going to be a little tagline but beside your picture. Um, and when students are searching for like IELTS teachers or conversational English teachers or uh, community tutors, they're going to see your picture, your uh, the languages you teach, and your tagline. Your tagline is going to kind of sum up who, who you are as a teacher, right? Um, that could be like um, energetic and creative Canadian English teacher, right? Or it could be um, professional, t professional IELTS prep coach from Britain. But yeah, this would sum up your qualifications, your specialization. So some of you don't specialize in anything, like that's completely fine. If you do, though, then you could put, yes, um, business English coach, right? Yeah. Um, and then your statistics and feedback. Your statistics show the rating that you have gotten from students, the number of students that you have taught, the number of lessons you have taught, uh, the your attendance level, so how often you have actually showed up to class because some teachers do miss classes, and um, reviews from students. So after every single class, italki will prompt the student to provide a star rating out of five stars for the uh, teacher and a few comments to give feedback. And finally, your um, account settings. So you have different account settings. This is like general stuff like your email, language, currency, time zone. Uh, privacy, so this could be contact permissions, the uh, students you have blocked. <laughs> if you need to block students, you may need to block students, but that would be very rare. Hopefully, notification, so how will you be notified about upcoming classes? And uh, payment, uh, your, such as your uh, billing country. So on italki, you could teach one-on-one -on -one or you could teach group lessons. So group lessons are only open to professional teachers as of right now. Typically, these group lessons will last a few weeks depending on the topic, so it would be a recurring kind of set of lessons. Uh, categories include daily conversation, language essentials, uh, travel and global culture, business and career, debating and discussion, hobbies and interests, exam preparation, and kids. So kind of like there are, how there are different search tags and categories for the one-on-one -on -one lessons, you also have these for the group lessons. Sessions are for two to six students. The more students who join, the more you get paid, of course. Um, again, this is not automatic. This is not a given, sorry. You need to attract students to sell these courses, right? Um, Italki does not just find the students for you. Uh, these lessons will be 60 minutes in length. Uh, class requests are accepted automatically until the class is full, so this will be auto-accept. Um, class materials are available for viewing or download only after purchasing the class, all right? So again, you're, oh, sorry. So again, you're the one in charge. You're the head honcho. You're the one who creates the materials, who uh, dis uh, who disseminates the uh, um, the materials, who gives out the materials, provides the materials, who assesses the students. It's all you, you, you. Don't let that scare you because as I said, teacher head, we have lots of resources that you could use uh, with your students, no matter what type of teacher you are or what kind of classes you're teaching. Um, classes are conducted via Zoom with meeting details provided 10 minutes before class time. Now, lesson packages. This is another fun feature that italki has, and it's fun because it allows you to really take control of your language teaching experience. And of course, it's about money as well, which is the reason why a lot of you are here. A lot of you are here because you want to teach on italki and make some money, or you want to, you, you've been teaching on italki and you want to make more money, right? So lesson packages, you could, offer single lessons, or you could have it that students could book five or 10 or 20 lessons all at once. And guess what? They will get a discount if they book all those lessons at once. So this helps to make learning more cost-effective and to attract long-term students. Again, that's your bread and butter. 
Bundles of lessons created and offered by teachers usually are at a discounted rate. Uh, these, these packages are valid for six months. The expiry date is listed on the packages page. All lessons must be completed before the expiration date. If they're not, then these actually get ref the money from the package gets refunded to the student. It used to be the other way around. It used to be that if if a student did not take all their lessons from their package in the six months, then the all the money, all the remaining money for those remaining uh, lessons would be transferred to the teacher. Now it's actually changed, so it's it's given to the student. Um, so it's purchased as a, a set number of lessons in advance. Teacher and lesson length cannot be changed once the package is scheduled. Um, students must communicate with the uh, teacher prior to requesting package extensions or terminations. Recurring lessons can be set up um, as well. So you could actually have it that students take the same class the same time each week, for example, if that makes things easier. Um, and uh, with these lesson types, by the way, students could take different types of lessons, like simultaneously. So I've had some students who want to work on their conversational English, but they also want to prepare for IELTS. Great. So in that case, I will say you could take one IELTS lesson each week and one conversational lesson each week. So let's say Anna, for example, books one conversational package, one IELTS preparation package, and they have conversational lessons every Monday, uh, IELTS prep lessons every Thursday, right? So that's um, an option as well. Getting paid, this is uh, what a lot of you are here for, right? So you get paid bi-monthly on the 15th and the 30th of the uh, month. It can take five to 10 business days to reach your bank account. Honestly, expect it to be closer to 10, but I'm sure that depends like where you're from as well. Typically, this is transferred through an online payment platform such as PayPal or Payoneer. Um, express withdrawal is available for an additional cost. So if you're, you know, like uh, tight for cash and you need the money uh, sooner, then you could request an express withdrawal. Um, funds can be transferred to your student wallet. So when you make money as a teacher, if you're also a learner on italki, you could just transfer it right to your student wallet and then you could buy uh, courses if you want to. But be careful, once you transfer the money to your student wallet, it's there for good. Italki is not gonna let you take it out. Uh, teacher settings. Um, so your teacher settings gives you access to updating your basic information, your private information, communication tools, your uh, teach or, or teacher profile, lessons and availability, and withdrawal funds, okay, um, or fund withdrawals. So this is what your profile would look like. All right, everybody, welcome to lesson number four, preparing for class. Let's talk about your very first italki class so that you show up prepared and confident. So you will start typically with a trial lesson. Um, this could be an official trial lesson, which is marketed as a trial lesson, or it could be just a conversational or general lesson, but it's your first lesson with the student. So it's basically a trial for both of you. What are the goals? You want to establish rapport. So you want to establish not being their best friend, but maybe establish some trust, uh, some understanding, um, some recognition of the learning plan and how to reach those goals. You as the teacher or tutor would want to assess the skills and capabilities of the student. Um, you'd like to set expectations, realistic expectations, and if there are any myths that need debunking, uh, this is the time to do it, right? Um, some of your students may have heard certain things from students about in English language learning or any language learning, which from your experience as a teacher or a tutor may not be very realistic, right? So this could be an opportunity to kind of uh, shed light on that. Um, this is also for a lot of your students, the first time they have ever spoken with a C2 level or native level speaker of your language. So I can't tell you how many times 
students have said to me, Ryan, you're the only like native English speaking person um, I've ever met or fully proficient English speaking person that I've ever met. Right. Um, so this could be a good opportunity for, you, you know, you just establish some comfort with your uh, students as well. And finally, to address questions, I'm sure your students will show up with some questions and you could uh, make sure uh, they know what to expect. All right, so one of the video communication tools is the italki classroom. This is a video communication tool. It includes video, audio, and chat. So as you see in this little uh, picture right here, you have the video um, taking up most of the screen. On the right-hand side, I'm not sure if you can see this little icon, but if you click on that, that will open up a chat so you could talk and send me messages, giving them feedback, maybe making notes on their strengths and areas for improvement as time goes on. Um, yeah, so video, audio, and chat, just like you would have on Skype. Um, or on Zoom. You could also turn your video off or t turn it back on. You could turn your mic off, turn your mic back on. Um, teachers can assign objectives to the lesson. Um, there is the option to share your screen on the italki classroom, and teachers can write notes to be reviewed later. So if it's something like, you know, uh, some homework you would like to give the student or some uh, um, like tips on a certain piece of the language that the student has made an error with, then you could write notes and save them for later. All right, understanding lesson plan structures. There are different types of lesson plan structures that you could create. This is all you. You don't have to show this to italki. You don't even need to show this to your students. Like this is just, this helps you to organize your thoughts, objectives, and goals for the lessons, right? So three of the different common structures that we teach teachers at Teach Ahead. The first one is called presentation practice production. This is a very common lesson plan structure that is used um, by English teachers worldwide. Um, Presentation is where you introduce the new language that will be taught in the class. Pr practice is, you know, controlled activities. This could be completing worksheets, for example, um, or repeat after me drills. And production is real world language use. The idea is that there's going to be a linear progression that students will start the class with you speaking more and them speaking less and then throughout the class they will get more and more confidence and they will be speaking more. Um, it is teacher-led at the beginning especially. It focuses a lot on accuracy, right? Um, if you want to know more about PPP, again we have a full course on lesson plan structures. Don't confuse this with lesson plan methodologies or lesson plan style, like teaching styles, for example. Uh, these are other concepts that we go over. TBLT, or task-based language teaching. This will have students complete real-world tasks. Maybe instead of something that is classroom specific, such as like uh, worksheets or grammar drills, it might be something like creating brochures or creating presentations, right? It's supposed to focus on meaning and communication, uh, which is similar to PPP, actually. Um, language uh, is learned through the completion of tasks. There is an emphasis on autonomy and collaboration. Um, the idea is to make language learning contextualized and it focuses on functional language skills. So instead of just focusing on the student being able to pronounce, pronounce every single sound or word correctly and to be able to use grammar completely correctly according to standard English, um, it could focus a little bit on giving the students the tools needed to accomplish the tasks that they need to accomplish. So if that is calling an internet service provider to request a refund, then that could be one of the kind of activities that you have in the class. 
Next, the flipped classroom method. The flipped classroom method, you will give your students a few materials to actually review before the class starts. So they will do a few activities, maybe uh, some of the material and content before the class. So when they come to class, they are more prepared, well-versed, and more knowledgeable in the concepts taught in the class, right? Um, so there are pre-recorded lectures, typically lectures or readings or videos. Um, class time is for interaction. So class time is not for learning the concepts. The students shouldn't go to class like being completely new to these concepts. They should have already learned them before the class. They come to the class, they get to use the concepts in the class, like use the present perfect or the past continuous. And uh, this is supposed to be learner paced. So students could do more outside the class asynchronously. So they could kind of set up their own learning plan, which is more flexible with their with their lifestyles and their needs. Um, the teacher is more of a facilitator. It focuses on active learning and it focuses on the integration of technology typically because most of the time the flipped classroom uh, focuses on things like digital materials, like watching videos, com uh, completing activities, right? And before you start your first class, ensure that you understand Italki's code of conduct. So first of all, cultural sensitivity, you need to respect the values and traditions, avoid stereotypes and treat all students equally. Professionalism and empathy, maintain professionalism, create a conducive learning environment, be punctual, patient. Attendance and punctuality, attend lessons on time and avoid rescheduling or canceling unless necessary positive rep representation, uphold a positive attitude towards italki and refrain from engaging in prohibited activities and bannable offenses. Um, actions such as taking transactions off italki, promoting competing services, engaging in spamming or disrespectful behavior, providing false information, scheduling lessons with oneself, or posting private contact information are strictly prohibited and may result in account deactivation. All right, everyone, welcome to lesson number five. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how you could not only get onto italki, but how you could set yourself apart. And that way you could become more competitive as a teacher. You could attract more students and hopefully you could create long time uh, teacher student relationships along the way. First, create a teacher philosophy. Now, at Teach Ahead, we have a course for t creating a teacher philosophy specific to language teachers. Um, but for the sake of this module, here are a few questions that you might want to consider. What is your approach to language teaching? How do you engage and motivate students? How do you incorporate cultural elements into your lessons? Do you or not? Like, why? Right? What type of classroom environment do you strive to create? How do you assess and provide feedback to students. Do you do these things? Maybe you don't. How do you, inter how do you integrate technology into your teaching? How do you address diverse learning needs? What is your philosophy on professional development? What theories of language acquisition influence your teaching? And how do you foster collaboration among students? This might be a little bit more important for like group lessons, but still it, it could be something that gives your students, even one-on-one -on -one students, a little snapshot of who you are as a teacher. Feel free to join ELT 2060 uh, to learn more about creating a language teacher philosophy. This could be incorporated into your professional portfolio and your resume. All right, best practices. So first of all, understand the language you teach. Understand how to learn it as well. So grammar, tips and tricks, hacks, shortcuts, a lot of these will come with experience. And we suggest that you stay open to learning because there's a lot that you don't know yet about the English language or the French language or the Spanish language. And it will come from experience. Um, admit when you're wrong. 
right? Because you are still learning these concepts. Uh, these are very big languages with very complex structures. Um, so strive to understand the language you teach bit by bit and all of these kinds of tips on how to learn it more efficiently and effectively, of course. Employee corrective feedback techniques. We have a full course on how to provide corrective feedback and it's free. So there's no reason for you to avoid it. We'll put the link um, in the resources section. Specialize in a niche area. So this is a big one, especially for student, for teachers that just need like an edge. Um, they feel like they are just a, a dime a dozen, um, a drop in an ocean of big, big uh, of lots of language teachers. Um, you know, do you, could you teach languages with movies? Could you teach languages through acting, through music? Could you teach languages through video games, for example? Um, if you can, then you could actually kind of structure your profile so that there are lessons that focus on these specific like niche areas, right? Um, do you have experience at working as a doctor? Do you have some medical knowledge or nursing knowledge? You could actually have English for nursing purposes classes where you teach English specific for nursing. So if you have any discipline related experience, definitely use that as leverage here. Um, Yes, personalized lessons to individual student needs. I swear your students will, are most likely to come back if you, if you treat them as individuals with uh, diverse, unique needs. Um, cultivate cultural sensitivity. Um, implement uh, innovative teaching methods. The best way to do that is just to stay in the know about uh, current trends in technology um, and uh, educational technology or ed tech. Utilize technology for dynamic learning experiences, right? We, we have a course on um, learning how to use ed tech in less than an hour. Check it out. Um, commit to continuous professional development. Maintain honesty and clarity with students. Keep students engaged and motivated. One way that you could do this is by creating a grade tracker with your students, or you could use Teach Aheads. Um, or you could give them uh, report cards, write report cards for them, like kind of pro progress reports every 10 or 20 or 30 lessons. You don't have to do this, okay? Uh, this is completely optional and your job at italki does not hinge on it, but it's um, it has been found to be successful for some uh, teachers. Um, Demonstrate professionalism and reliability, right? Like come to class. If you can't make it to class, let your students know well in advance. Uh, build rapport and positive teacher-student relationships. Okay, everyone. Hello and welcome to lesson number six. We're going to talk about what you really need to know. And those are some of the common challenges. Number one, dealing with stakeholders. Stakeholders are people who have a vested interest in the learning of your students, all right? Th these could be teachers or students themselves, but like obviously you know that you're going to have to deal with your students' needs, wants, demands, expectations, etc. If you are going to be teaching children or even teenagers, adolescents, a lot of the time their parents will be the ones organizing the booking of the lessons. The parents may or may not be sitting in the room while you're teaching the student. If you are comfortable with them sitting in the room while teaching them, great. If you're not comfortable with that, that's okay as well. That is your right to negotiate this with the with the parent and or the student. They, they might ask what your recommendations are for the future um, and how they could, you know, improve the student's learning capabilities. They might give you updates on their grades at school in their English classes. Uh, they might ask you questions. They might give you suggestions. And how you deal with all of this completely depends on you 
as a teacher. Some teachers really like to get input from parents. Others find that parents could get in the way and it depends on the parent as well. You can also give suggestions to the parents potentially on how to supplement the language learning experience while the student is outside of the class. So that could uh, result in some support at home. Um, expectations, so what are the parents' expectations? Italki doesn't give you any like um, teaching resources or materials, that's all you, right? But uh, when it comes to money, for example, um, or even the professional development webinars um, could be useful. Um, the policy and compliance, so you need to make sure that you're abiding by the rules set by Aitaki and evaluation and uh, accountability. So ensuring that you are attending classes and third, friends. So sometimes you will have classes with students who are adults, but the adult students might not have very high levels of English or whichever language you're teaching. They may be at an A1 or an A2 level, and they may actually ask their brother or sister or friend, like family friend, to be their kind of um, speaker, right? To speak on behalf of them, uh, to help set up the classes. And sometimes those people will actually be kind of sitting in on the classes, maybe even supervising to like help to translate with the with the student for the first or second class. I mean, this should not be a long term thing. Your classes should be between you and your student, but sometimes this could be for the first couple classes if your student is a little bit low, like lacking in confidence, right? So sometimes they will ask for their uh their friend to sit in for just in case if they need any like extra support. Other challenges, student engagement. How do you get your students uh, motivated and engaged? I mean, this could really happen with uh, like moody teens if you're teaching moody teens. If you're teaching a, um, a student who has taken the IELTS exam three or four times and has not gotten the score that they want and they're losing motivation. If you're teaching somebody who just had a child um, and they're exhausted because they're taking care of their child uh, with their partner, right? Scheduling could be a difficulty. Sometimes you might encounter issues with students not coming to class and then they want a refund. Um, according to Italki's policy, um, you don't have to give them a refund. If a student doesn't come to class and they don't reschedule um, in due time, that money belongs to you, all right? But uh, this is, you know, like touch and go, and it really depends. It Like it's a case-to-case -case basis right here, how you want to deal with it behind the scenes. Uh, technical issues, of course, that could be a problem uh, depending on your internet. And again, we said it before, if you could improve your internet connection, do it. That could be an investment that could really make a big difference in the long term. Payment and rates, uh, lesson planning, student retention, so keeping students. And sometimes students will stop booking with you, not because they dislike you, but there are other circumstances in their lives, like it could even be something financial, right? Feedback and reviews. Um, so not just getting negative feedback that discourages you, but also you might be giving excellent, excellent, excellent lessons to students and you could tell that they're really enjoying it, but they don't give you the feedback. So you're not able to market how well your lessons are or how high a quality they are to other prospective students because all of the feedback gets kind of put onto your profile for other prospective students to see. Uh, so it's not just about the um, like showing negative feedback, but also not showing positive feedback. Um, cultural differences, professional development. So that's one of the issues with these kinds of platforms and freelancing in general. There, You might feel like you're in your own bubble, right? And that there is not a lot of support for you out there. So 
avenues of professional development, you might feel like there's a bit of a glass ceiling um, working as a teacher or a tutor at a place like italki. Uh, so again, it could be a blessing in that it could give you a foot in the door and it could get you started, but there could also be, um, you know, a limit right there too. Work-life balance or lack thereof, right? So there could be issues with establishing a work-life balance, especially if you're, if you want the classes that bad that you have like auto accept enabled all the time, or you want to get as many students as possible. So you have your, your calendar fully open 20, like 20 hours a day or something that could be really difficult too. native speakerism. So a lot of teachers who are not from quote unquote native speaking countries could be disadvantaged and discouraged uh, by these policies. Teaching effectiveness, lack of professional development, competition with other teachers. So there are certain things that are just out of your control. Um, some things you could, you know, enhance your experience, but there are certain things uh, that other teachers, I mean, the demographic, the age, things like that, that other teachers may have that you just aren't able to have or get, right? So uh, knowing what you can work on and, and uh, dealing and accepting what you uh, can't work on is a plus right here too. Overcoming the challenges, like number one, just stay current, stay up to date with the digital trends. We're living in a digital world. It's not changing from, from what we see in 2024. It's only ramping up. So make sure you're staying up to date, um, that you're at least aware of educational technology, of things like the flip classroom, of AI in education, the pros and cons, the limitations, the affordances. We have courses at Teach Ahead. We have free courses. We have free resources. We have low cost resources. Check them out. Seek help. Contact iTalki or post the forums if you have issues, right? Find a community like go on to the Facebook group for iTalki um, and join it and you know vent and hear other people vent and read the post and interact with like-minded people so share resources share resources share your experiences on social media talk about what worked for you what didn't um and learn from other teachers while doing while doing so and establish relationships uh long-term students equal success like um 90 percent of your classes will probably be with like 10 percent of your students so don't take it personally if people don't read book because sometimes sometimes it it is because of something you did but a lot of the time it's just there are things outside of your control or there are ex extenuating circumstances that um the student has right um but uh, yeah, try to establish those relationships. Don't force it. But if you show up prof professional, if you show up prepared, and if you establish your own philosophy and your own real style authentically, you will establish these long-term uh, relationships with students. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, let's talk about the strengths of italki and really the benefits of working as a teacher or tutor. So first of all, the italki community. Through the community, you could actually create podcasts as a teacher, which could help to attract different students to book lessons with you. You could um, create exercises and your students could complete exercises like grammar worksheets or um, vocabulary um, exercises on italki. And students could ask and answer questions on italki. So a, a student could ask, you, ask a question in the community forum, you know, what's the difference between the present perfect and the past simple? And then teachers could go on there and give their explanations. And if a student likes your explanation, they might click on your profile and actually book lessons with you, right? So that's a way that you could interact with students. Italki has put a lot of work into this community to try to like develop it over the years. And I'm sure they're going to continue to add uh, new cool features within this community too. So uh, check that out. Remember it's free. 
Um, italki webinars. So there are monthly or bi-monthly live stream professional development sessions. You will likely get emails about these where you could sign up for them. They are free. All right. So these could be uh, sessions that touch on things like the flipped classroom methodology on creating courses, on teaching conversational English classes, on giving homework to students. Could be something like teaching with artificial intelligence, any of those things, right? Um, Italki partnerships, so uh, they are in the business of uh, providing sponsorships, right? And aff affiliates. Um, so there are affiliation programs that you could actually join um, where you could get a link and then try to invite people to italki. And if they book a lesson, even if they don't book it with you, you could get a portion of the uh, money they pay. Uh, they've been partnering with different educational institutions, which has brought more students to the platform. And I'm sure they're going to continue doing this in the future, um, ideally. Teaching opportunities. So now there are group lessons, right? This is something that is re relatively new to italki just over the past couple of years. Uh, they've rolled it out. They started with a pilot program and now they have that. Now it's uh, set up their group lessons. Um, there are, um, there's also a function on italki with potential students. So this is when a student views your profile um, they will actually tell you that these students have viewed your profile. So you could then reach out to these students if you wish. It could also be potential students like students who have needs and they've set their needs on their learning profile and those link up with what you offer as a teacher on your teaching profile. Uh, so these are things that are automated, I'm sure, artificial intelligence will be used in the future to really try to enhance uh, the usability of these functions. Um, italki test, so there is profi proficiency testing and I'm sure just like with Duolingo and other um, language learning uh, tools online, um, similar to Duolingo, there will be more proficiency testing, which are actually developed and offered by italki. Um, global access. So teachers can connect with students from diverse backgrounds from all over the world. Uh, how cool is that, right? So under the cool functions, just how great is it that, you know, uh, millions of students go on italki to learn. You, you have the world at your fingertips. Positive changes, question mark. So remember, we at Teach Ahead have nothing to do with italki, all right? We are not connected to italki in any way, shape, or form. We are just uh, very passionate educators who have experience teaching on italki. That's it, right? Um, so these are some po things that you might find positive or maybe not. So first of all, there's increased demand on italki, um, improved platform features. So for example, the italki classroom, when it was first rolled out, um, we at Teach Ahead had, had many issues with it. Uh, it's much more, much smoother now and it works much better now. Um, diverse teaching opportunities. So there are group lessons, as we said, community support, expanded resources, such as professional development, um, improved payment and compensation. So the like the minimum rate for professional teachers has uh, has increased. But at the same time, it's like if students don't want to pay $20 or $30 or $40, it doesn't really matter how much the minimum is moved up by, right? Um, and enhanced support services. Welcome to lesson number eight. We are going to talk about some of the limitations of italki and some of the challenges that you may encounter as an italki teacher or community tutor. Let's begin. So the drawbacks of being an italki teacher. First of all, income stability. It has to be said, your income is unpredictable. And even if you're teaching on italki for five, six, or seven years, you're not gonna see all that many uh, patterns in your compensation. Uh, y y there are things that are out of your control um, in the macroeconomic uh, landscape, right? Um, 
you could be making a certain amount of money and getting a certain amount of courses uh, one month and a complete different story the next month, right? Uh, there are fluctuations in student demand. There are periods of low bookings, right? One of the things that Italki has done is they've actually closed applications for certain languages uh, so that teachers who are on there will get more students, right? Um, so that is one of the things that they, they have done. But again, this is a marketplace. This is a platform. So there are so many moving variables and it could be a little bit difficult uh, because you are self-employed on, on italki. You're not employed by italki. So uh, they don't find you classes. You need to find them yourselves. Um, isolation. So you might find feel a lack of social interaction on italki, especially if you haven't joined like one of the communities of one of the Facebook groups, for example. So there's a limited uh, camaraderie with colleagues, right? Because you are seeing students, but you're not seeing any coworkers. So if you're not going on to Reddit or going to the uh, professional development webinars, you're, you're not interacting with any other teachers, right? Um, there's reduced face-to-face -face interaction with students, which could make you feel isolated as well. And job security, I mean, that's what it is. It's freelance. So on one end, you have great flexibility, um, which opens up the door to the potential of great, uh, you know, um, personal professional life balance. Um, but at the same time, there, there's a lack of benefits. There's no health insurance, no retirement plans, no pension, no job security, limited professional development opportunities. So typically, you could become a teacher and try to work your way up to earning more and more and more money. The maximum is whatever, $80, $100, $108. It, it depends on your language. And that's it. Once you hit there, that is the end of the road, right? There's no way to move up in the ranks to be like a teacher trainer and then a manager and then like a VP. I mean, obviously these things may change as time goes on. And if these things do change throughout the 2020s, we will update this course with this information. But this is one of the drawbacks of being an italki teacher. It, it, it is what it is, right? This is what you sign up for. It is a platform. It's a marketplace. You're not working for the company. You're working on their website, right? So you are just kind of marketing, advertising your skills and your strengths. And the students are the ones who compensate you. So what are the ways forward? And again, we've put a little question mark here because it's like, th these are a few things we have seen as teacher had uh, teachers on italki and on similar uh, platforms, but this is open to debate. So please um, interact with the, um, interact with us on the blog forums that we put in the, uh, in the resources section below. So, enhance communication tools should there be improvements to the italki classroom for, for example um, and maybe even the messages right um, professional development opportunities right um, how could we f improve the professional development webinars how could we make them more accessible how could we make them more plentiful right feedback mechanism. So how will italki improve the way that students could give feedback and maybe how teachers could give feedback too? Resource hub, um, will italki be offering more resources for lesson planning, for assessments, for report cards, etc.? Um, again, this is one of the reasons why we have so many of these resources specific for italki teachers at Teach Ahead because we want to fill this gap. Teacher recognition programs. Maybe they'll be offering some sort of TESOL or TESOL or academy uh, for teacher training in the future. Streamlined administrative processes, um, supportive community, continuous platform improvement, um, transparent policies, and access to professional development funds. Yeah, so for the uh, transparent policies as well, you know, a lot of students are surprised by the refund policy on italki or the um 
rescheduling policy on italki. Some some students don't know about these, so just making sure this is transparent. Hello everyone, welcome to lesson number nine, useful resources. So we're going to just go through a list of useful resources for italki teachers and tutors, um, and we'll put all of the links to these resources in the resources section uh, linked to this module. Let's begin. So um, italki teacher support center, teacher resource hub, italki blog for teachers italki teacher forums, italki Facebook group for teachers, italki teacher handbook, sorry, italki teacher handbook, italki YouTube channel, italki language exchange, italki referral program, their community guidelines, their teaching policy help center, mobile app, terms of service, privacy policy, payment frequently asked questions, blog for educators, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn page, and of course, check out everything Teach Ahead because we have, if anybody has um, resources for italki teachers, it's us. So the links are in the resources section. And finally, welcome everybody to the end of this free course, Online Language Teaching in the 2020s. So in order to be a great italki teacher, I mean, you got to be a great online language teacher. And part of that is staying up to date with the key trends. What are some key trends in the 2020s? Well, AI powered personalization for your language students, VR or AR integration, gamification of learning such as Duolingo and Babbel, micro learning and bite-sized lessons, um, mobile learning applications such as Tandem or HelloTalk, social learning platforms, data-driven instruction, um, remote teaching collaborations, um, interactive whiteboard tools. We have a course where we introduce you to 200 ed tech tools. Um, again, this is a, a full run through. We go through all of the tools uh, where you could kind of get a brief introduction to each one and you could decide which ones you incorporate into your teaching. Um, emphasis on cultural competency. Um, so even though we're teaching online and we're teaching in a globalized kind of platform, um, not to forget about the existence and the importance of culture. Online language exchanges and tandem learning. Digital badges and certifications such as our TESOL uh, certificate. Increased focus on pronunciation and speaking skills hybrid teaching models, and professional development for online language educators. So remember folks, please continue developing, continue uh, improving your certification and add those things to your resume. Follow Teach Ahead to teach with EdTech more efficiently and effectively. We have, as I said, resources, um, courses. We Many of them are free. So you, you have nothing to lose. Just come on over to our website, all the links below. Thank you so much, everybody. Best of luck teaching on italki. Remember, you always have a community right here at Teach Ahead. If you have any questions, just send us an email at weteachahead at gmail.com. Happy teaching.